This just in, breaking news, our top story tonight, popular YouTuber Data Dash publicly apologizes for being paid to promote coins and also reveals he has $300,000 stuck on a hard drive. It's just another day in the world of cryptocurrency. Speaking of people who were wrong and issued a statement about it, Jamie Dimon said today that he regrets calling Bitcoin a fraud. Thanks for the clarification, Jamie. It's good to have you on the team. Can we get to choose who's on the team? American technology company Kodak has announced they will be having an ICO for their own cryptocurrency. The details aren't clear, and hopefully as more information comes out, we'll get a better picture. And finally tonight, experts are weighing in that many cryptocurrencies, including Dogecoin, could possibly be in a bubble. Are they right, or can you teach an old Doge new tricks? All of this and more tonight on Crypto News. I want to welcome everybody back to the channel. We've got a lot of great stories to cover today, and make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss videos in the future. Jumping right into it, earlier today, Data Dash released a video on his channel called So I Messed Up with a thumbnail that said I've made a mistake. If you are not familiar with Data Dash, he's one of the biggest and fastest growing YouTubers in this space on YouTube. He has a lot of videos reviewing different coins that are coming out or tokens that are coming out, as well as trying to break things down for people that are both new to the space and also more advanced. Honestly, he has a pretty great channel. If you've not checked it out, I'd recommend doing so. Anyway, as far as the video that he made today goes, he apologized to his fans for accepting money to promote certain currencies. Now, these were currencies that he himself believed in. He wasn't showing stuff that he didn't think was good, but at the same time, he was paid to promote these different currencies. He came clean and he wanted to provide transparency for how he was going to be acting in these situations moving forward. The 100,000 substratum tokens, and this is quite embarrassing for me to talk about being one of the largest channels in the space. One of the biggest problems um, with the 100,000 substratum tokens is that I do not have access to it. He also released in the video that he has 100,000 units of substratum that are stuck on a hard drive that ran out of space while he was trying to import the Ethereum ledger, and he's trying to do some advanced tactics to get this money back. You might be sitting there asking yourself, Doug, what's wrong with promoting something you believe in and being paid for it? And to be honest with you, there's nothing wrong with that at all, as long as you disclose that you're being paid to do so. Some of you might remember the problem with the CSGO skins that happened around a year, year and a half ago, where YouTubers would promote themselves winning massive amounts of money while gambling on YouTube and then pretend that they didn't own the site when they were an owner. What most people don't realize is that it was not the gambling itself that got them taken down. It was actually the fact that they did not disclose that they were owners of the site. They'd pump it up, be like, wow, this site's amazing. I can't believe I just won this much. This site's, I love this site and they were the owners of the site. If you own a site, then you have to disclose it to your audience. It's just a rule, which is why I'm willing to disclose that I am an owner of CoinCentral.com, popular cryptocurrency news website. Anyway, Datadash did not disclose this information, but I actually have a lot of respect for Datadash overall. He seems to have a lot of knowledge of what is happening in the cryptocurrency space. And so I think it's actually a good move that he came forward and did this. Now, should he have done it before? No, it's obviously not the right thing to do, but at the same time, it's fine, or at least it's better that he's decided to come forward and say that it happened. In general, it's okay to have sponsored posts as long as you tell your viewers that it's sponsored. You can't just pretend like something is awesome when you're being paid to do it. That's actually very disingenuous to your audience and your audience cares about you. You know, people watch videos to hear what you have to say as a YouTuber, to learn from you. And so to then try and get them to buy something that you're being paid for, it gets a little bit into a gray area there. The thing is, it's kind of a gray area anyway, because even if you're not paid, if you do purchase coins before you promote them on your channel, you can cause a bump in those coins prices. So it's an interesting situation where you're almost always incentivized as a YouTuber to buy something before you talk about it. And as you get bigger, that problem becomes worse. Personally, I don't know what a good solution is, right? Because can you say, oh, I believe in this coin, but I can't talk about it because the value will go up? Or do you buy it and talk about it because you believe it's a good coin anyway and it's okay to make money off of it? You know, it, it, it's kind of an interesting area there. My stance on this channel is I'm primarily going to talk about news and things that I find that are happening. But if I do talk about a coin that I like that's upcoming, I'm going to probably own it and I will always disclose that information to you guys.
The second part of the story is getting pretty absurd. Now, I'm sure when he got the substratum, it was worth five or 10 or $15,000. I don't know what the price was when they made the deal, but now it's worth over $300,000. You're gonna wanna get those guys back. It's also sort of a bad look when you're the technical expert guy to not be able to access $300,000 of your own money. All in all, Data Dash is very knowledgeable and a good guy and he made a mistake and came clean. Frankly, I think this is a channel that you guys should be checking out if you want good information on what's happening. But it also shows us how easy it is for people to slip into the dark side of being paid to get you people to try and buy what they're doing. So be careful and never, never take things for granted or take things as true before you've put in the time to do your research. I'm not really exactly too sure what a public key is. Next up, Kodak announces an ICO and the stock immediately jumps. And we've seen this trend all over the place. All you have to do in the stock market these days is put a blockchain next to your stock name. All of a sudden, that thing's blasting off. To be honest, I don't know if this is a big story or not. It's so early. We don't really know exactly what they're trying to do. If you want to learn more, the link is in the description below, but we're going to have to see what happens. There are going to be ICOs left, right, and center. So hold on to your hats, guys. It's going to be a crazy ride. Our next topic tonight, many experts have... Wait, hold on. I'm receiving some news. It appears a YouTuber has quit his job after making sizable investments in the cryptocurrencies Wax, Storm, and Deep Brain Chain, which are all crushing the market today. All right. Whatever. I'll keep making some vids. Full disclosure, I own all three of those tokens. Next up, in the land of bulls, some bears are ready to go into hibernation. According to this article from CNBC, Charles Hoskinson, co-founder of Ethereum, said to CNBC that my personal opinion is that we're going to see a consolidation after a crash. Hoskinson raised concerns about unrealistic cryptocurrency projects entering the space. What's going to occur is a lot of these ventures that don't have strong fundamentals, don't have good tech, or just are unrealistic projects, they will eventually run into some major wall they can't quite overcome. They will fracture up and you will see a lot of them that are certain to fail. So here's the thing, there are so many people trying to do stuff in the crypto space, so many people with so many projects, and they're getting more and more grand, more and more world changing. And while those are great, and if they're successful, they could become valuable, we're gonna see more people just try and swing the bat because if you hit a home run right now, in this market, it can be worth billions of dollars. Dogecoin's founder, Jackson Palmer, said Friday that it was concerning that the virtual currency he helped create had reached such a high valuation, despite the fact that the project hasn't released a software update in more than two years. He said, I have a lot of faith in the Dogecoin core development team to keep the software stable and secure, but I think it says a lot about the state of the cryptocurrency space in general, that a currency with a dog on it, which hasn't released a software update in over two years, has a $1 billion market. And this guy's right. Look, I'm not telling you it's going down today. I'm not telling you it's going down tomorrow. Who knows, maybe it won't go down for a long time. But I think at some point, the madness will reel in and we're gonna see a correction in the market. Now the thing is, if I knew that, I would know when to do it. And so many people just sit in the sidelines hoping for that moment. And in the meanwhile, they miss out on so many gains. People have been saying this for so long, particularly in the last year, that it's all coming to an end. And while that could be true tomorrow, it most likely isn't. Understand the risks of what you're getting into and also understand it can't grow like this forever. But don't be so conservative that you miss out on potential gains because you're scared. Standard disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. This is an information entertainment channel. All investments have risk, nothing's guaranteed. Our final story is a bit of good news for the old Bitcoin. Jamie Dimon has said that he regrets calling Bitcoin a fraud. Now, several months ago, uh, Jamie made some comments, and Jamie, of course, is the CEO of JP Morgan, the, the, the bank Chase. Basically, he came out and said that Bitcoin was a fraud and that he wouldn't be investing in it, and he was sick of talking about it, and it was all gonna go down to nothing eventually. Anyway, so this guy was one of the big people coming out strongly against Bitcoin, and as the CEO of a major bank in the world, it's never good to hear that. Let's take a look at some of the things that Jamie said. If it can be done digitally with the blockchain, so be it. But it'll still be a dollar cryptocurrency. 
What I have an issue with is a non-fiat cryptocurrency, dollar, so crypto, uh, sterling, euro, yen, so they're all fine. I don't personally understand the value of something that has no actual value. You all can do whatever you want, and I don't care. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right. That sounds definitive. Bitcoin hit a new high today. It just I, I could care less what Bitcoin trades for, how it trades, why it trades, who trades it. If you're stupid enough to buy it, you'll pay the price for it one day. We get it. This guy is not a fan of Bitcoin. But one of the most hypocritical parts of this is that he actually was developing his own blockchain while calling it a fraud. That's right. As he sat there berating Bitcoin, JP Morgan Chase was making moves into the space. We actually found this page here from JP Morgan talking about their own blockchain and distributed ledger that they are working on. They were working on doing the same thing while calling the other one a scam. Man, if you can't have your cake and eat it too, you know, Jamie Dimon has to have some serious balls, like kahunas. Like, to sit there and say those things about Bitcoin while creating your own technology based around the same technology as Bitcoin, pretty low move. But those days are gone. And in this article today from CNBC, Jamie Dimon says he regrets calling Bitcoin a fraud and believes in the technology behind it. Speaking about calling Bitcoin a fraud, he said, I regret making that comment. He also said the blockchain is real. You can have crypto dollars and yen and stuff like that. ICOs, you got to look at everyone individually. The Bitcoin was always to me what the governments are going to feel about Bitcoin when it gets really big. And I just have a different opinion than other people. He also said, I'm not interested that much in the subject at all speaking about ICOs. So what does this mean? We're getting mixed messages here, but I do think that it's a good step overall for Bitcoin. We want people in positions like this to take positive steps towards incorporating different digital currencies because if they do that, then it opens the door for more and more projects to come through as well as more usability for people and increased demand. This is something that we want and we want to try and embrace. Now, that doesn't mean that it's all going to be smooth sailing at Chase Bank from here. Who knows what they can do? They could honestly decide whatever they think is in the best interest of making themselves money. And that's oftentimes what banks do. But this is a step in the right direction. And I'm excited to see what happens from here. That's going to be it for us here at Crypto News for today. I want to say thank you to everyone that tuned in. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys again soon.